Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse completely redefines the Marvel multiverse, not just within this animated Spider-Verse corner of it, but I would say fix the broken or incomplete logic of the live-action Marvel Cinematic Universe as well, if Marvel Studios can just follow the example of what this movie did right. Spoiler warning before I continue, but Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has an insanely ambitious plot that both deepens and clarifies the multiverse logic that we've seen before in the MCU, picking up a lot of the loose threads and broken pieces of the multiverse mumbo jumbo that we've heard across the MCU's various titles over the years, and in doing so, binds this animated Spider-Verse closer than ever to the live-action MCU, so that really it is now just one interconnected web. That came out of you. Yeah. You can't do that, huh? No. Using even similar imagery and the exact same actors, just from a different perspective with different terminology. So let's break it down. Also, please watch my Spider-Verse videos over on the Deep Dive channel and support me with one of these Miles Morales Multiverse Dive shirts that you can get at nerdriot.shop. Seriously, I'm gonna be wearing this until I am bleeding from the armpits. Okay, as you watch across the Spider-Verse, there are some interesting nods to the MCU. Like in the opening sequence, Miguel O'Hara tells Gwen Stacy, Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 1999-99. Who's Doctor Strange? 199999 has been the past universal designation of the live action MCU. So Miguel is telling us he is aware of Doctor Strange and Tom Holland Peter Parker tampering with the multiverse in the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. A movie that, you might remember, included both the Tobey Maguire Peter Parker and the Andrew Garfield Peter Parker. Then later in this movie in the Spider Society headquarters, Margot Cast Spider Bite shows Miles the imprisoned multiversal anomalies from across the multiverse, including a live action cameo by Donald Glover as Aaron Davis Prowler. He tells Miles, it's rude to stare, and he he later yells boo as Miles runs past him. Holy shit, a live action actor in the same room as a bunch of animated characters. This is some real hoovering Roger Rabbit, Mary Poppins bullshit, and I'm here for it. Now you may remember Donald Glover played Aaron Davis in the 2017 MCU Spider-Man Homecoming film, but he was not yet the Prowler with any kind of suit like this. He also cameoed in the 2018 Into the Spider-Verse on TV in the scene from NBC's Community when he played Troy wearing Spider-Man pajamas. Now it's not yet clear if Donald Glover Aaron Davis in this movie is the same as the one from the MCU in Homecoming, but it is possible because several Several years have passed since the events of Spider-Man Homecoming in the MCU. If Miguel had referenced the events of No Way Home in the same movie, and in Homecoming, Aaron Davis mentioned having a nephew who lived in the area whom he called Miles in a deleted scene. Yeah, sorry Miles, I'm, I'm not gonna make it. So this one cameo is a huge deal. It signals to us that within the MCU, that same Miles may be the one who gets established in canon very soon. Additionally, when the spot Joy rides through the multiverse, he stops at Miss Chen's bodega from Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage. What do you want? I'm robbing you because I'm a bad guy. Now, it's interesting, this movie labels this universe Earth 688, meaning it's also a codified part of this vast Spider-Verse, which you may remember, also connected to the MCU from the post credit scenes of Venom Let There Be Carnage and Spider-Man No Way Home. There is still a Venom symbiote crawling somewhere around the MCU. So all this brings us to the big scene with Miguel O'Hara where he explains the multiverse from his perspective. He projects a web of red lasers and he says, this here, this is all of us, all of our lives woven together in a beautiful web of life and destiny. The web of life and destiny in the Marvel comics is the name of the cosmic force that connects all spider things together. But here Miles gasps, the Spider-Verse? Miguel responds, the Spider-Verse? That's stupid. And then he says, the arachno humanoid poly multiverse. But he admits that sounds pretty stupid too. Now for a brief moment here, there is a separate projection showing the web of life and destiny as a white snaking vine with branches. It's the same exact imagery of the sacred timeline in the multiverse that the MCU has used in Loki and then in the post credit scene of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania with the Kang Dynasty. This was Miguel's way of showing all of existence, but specifically for spider people, they're connected by these angular webs with nodes. Miles asks about these, and these nodes where the lines converge, and Miguel explains, they are the canon, the chapters that are part of every spider story, every time. Some good, some bad, some very bad. He offers an example. This one, event ASM-90, a police captain close to Spider-Man dies, saving a kid from collapsing rubble during a battle with an arch nemesis. Now the canon event number is a reference to The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 90 from 1970 when Spider-Man's battle with Doc Ock leads to the death of George Stacy, Gwen's father, and we actually see panel art from that exact comic. Another note also shows Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, crying over Captain Stacy's body from the 2012 Amazing Spider-Man film, saying Captain Stacy, I'm so sorry. And a little later on, there's a note showing Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker crying over the body of Cliff Robertson, Uncle 
Uncle Ben from the 2002 Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. So if those are connected to the MCU from Spider-Man No Way Home, because those Peters reference these past tragedies by the mathematical associative property, so too is this universe connected to it. Geology is a 22-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in Men's Health, Oprah Daily, Hype Beast, Birdie, Esquire, and GQ. Their products are built around just a handful of powerful, proven ingredients that have been trusted by dermatologists for decades. Just take a quick 30-second diagnostic quiz, and Geology will create a simple and effective skincare or hair care routine customized just for you. Geology's co-wash and their deodorant are just so great, and I use them all the time. But right now, they're offering a special offer for a skincare sampler pack, and Geology skincare stuff is in a league of its own. Geology's line of skincare products can help you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, combat dark or puffy under eyes, have smoother, hydrated skin, and target signs of aging. There's never been a better time to try Geology than right now. For a limited time, use code ROCKSTARS100 to get 100% off your personalized 30-day skincare sampler set. All you have to cover is the $4.95 for shipping. What a deal! On top of that, new Rockstars fans get an exclusive bonus offer of up to 50% off on an additional skin, hair, and body product of your choice when you add it to your trial. Click the link in the description or go to G-E-O-L-O-G dot I-E slash Rockstars 100 to get started. Miguel continues to explain, Canon events are the connections that bind our lives together. And he later says, break enough canon, save enough captains, and we could lose everything. So canon events seem to be what the animated Sony Spider-Verse is calling what an episode of Marvel Studios What If called absolute points, fixed inevitable plot points in a character's destiny that cannot be bypassed without threatening the fabric of existence. For Doctor Strange in that universe, it was the death of Christine Palmer, and across the Spider-Verse, one of many examples was the death of Inspector Singh in Earth 50101, the father to Privateer Prabhakar's girlfriend who was supposed to die in Mumbai, but Miles saved him and he disrupted that canon event. It's worth noting that in the case of that episode of What If, the Doctor Strange episode, when reality began to erode, it also did so in the medium of oozing black ink as it does in this movie. Now, this isn't to be confused with Nexus events in the MCU, which the Loki series defined as a turning point in history from which a branch timeline diverges. Another interesting wrinkle to all of this is the way the Spider-Verse apparently looks at J. Jonah Jameson. J.K. Simmons played J. Jonah both in the Sam Raimi trilogy and in the MCU Tom Holland trilogy, contradicting what seems to be a rule in many other cases that each universe has different actors playing the characters, even though the movies do make some exceptions to that, like with Patrick Stewart playing Charles Xavier in multiple universes. But in this movie, anytime we hear J. Jonah Jameson, it is the voice of J.K. Simmons. We actually hear it a couple times, like first in Miles Morales' universe, Earth-1610, during an early recap montage, and then later, in the LEGO universe, designated Earth-13122, they sample his exact audio from the 2002 film. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. But other than Miguel referring to the little nerd in Earth-19999, we don't get a Tom Holland Peter Parker cameo in this movie. But Genki Lee does refer to himself as Miles' guy in the chair, as Ned Leeds does in the MCU films, to Peter Parker, despite his name, Ned, with Jacob Battle playing the character is definitely based on Genki Lee from the Ultimate Comics, but the fact that Miguel O'Hara's tech displays the multiverse with the same branching sacred timeline imagery that we saw in Loki and in Quantumania tells us that his technology from the year 2099 in Nueva York is starting to tap into the tech that Nathaniel Richards will master in the 31st century, which yes, is 900 years later, but this shows that Miguel can at least observe a piece of it, and he knows enough about how the web of life and destiny works for spider people to try to maintain a proper flow of canon. And I think this is a testament to the arachno frequency all spider people share, a stronger awareness and appreciation of one's variants that allows spider people to cooperate and share resources at a faster rate than variants of other individuals. Like it took Loki and Sylvie a few episodes to get along with each other, and even then Sylvie still stabbed him in the back, and Kang, despite his cooperation, all the Kangs ended up at war with each other. But the Peters and all the other spider people seem to inherently, at least at first, trust each other as a result of their shared tragedies. Oh, cool. Uh, let me guess. He died? So this would mean, as the MCU steers toward events like Secret Wars, this spider society, or any team up of spider people, is going to be especially important to bridging gaps in the multiverse, teaching other individuals how to trust each other, how to cooperate, and how to defeat multiversal threats like Kang. And now that Amy Pascal has confirmed this week that we will get a live-action Miles Morales movie, I think this guarantees that Miles is going to show up in the same world of Tom Holland Peter Parker, and that the nephew Donald Glover referred to in Homecoming will finally get paid off. Hey, a reminder to subscribe to our new channel, The Deep Dive. And you can support us for grabbing some merch like this multiverse dive shirt at nerdriot.shop. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rock Stars and subscribe to New Rock Stars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.